Hello everybody, welcome back to One Leeds, it is Connor here, Leeds United drawing 1-1 to Rotherham in a result I really didn't expect, Leeds lethargic, poor, and it's, it's, it's a game where I'm, I'm really knocked off, a real opportunity for us to pile the pressure on Ipswich tomorrow and Leeds were just not good enough, simply, there was actually more phase in that second half where I thought Rotherham looked more dangerous definite penalty should have been awarded for Dan James with a, a, a red card um, tackle from, from Lee Peltier, but that's not an excuse. Uh, Leeds' defensive display for that first goal that Rotherham scored was 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 really poor. Um, three tackles missed, Archie, Rodon, Ampadu, and then I'll be honest with you, I thought it was a, 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 a shot that, that Elan Melia had to save near post, two yards away from his, his near post and somehow he doesn't get down to it and save it weak and we've seen that far too often from Eli Melier in his career not just this season I thought he should have done a lot better there I think we missed Byram's tenacity in this game I thought Furpo looked a little bit out of his depth which when you're looking at Rotherham away is a slight concern I know he's coming back into it but still a slight concern I thought Cooper saved us, didn't he? A clearance off the line, but on the general balance of play, I think him and Furpo on that left-hand side really don't complement each other well. I thought Cooper looked slow. I thought Furpo, Furpo's awareness was poor. He was out of position, especially for their first goal. Liam Cooper, I thought when they, when they fancied taking him on 1v1, he wasn't really able to deal with it. And overall, I didn't think the defensive display was 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 that great. To be honest with you, I thought when they counterattacked, they were able to get little bits out of that defend defensive display. And I thought, you know, it, we looked unfit. I thought we looked lethargic, a little bit tired at points. Don't get me wrong. I thought Rutter didn't look fit whatsoever, and that's why I was calling for the change when it came to Ian Paveda. And Lee just didn't look on it. I didn't think there were players showing for the ball in that that offensive. We can all talk about defending and all this sort of stuff which I did during the watch long which I you know I, we, we analyzed me and Gabe defending 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 but when your players aren't showing for the ball especially in that second half what can you do what can you do because the ball's coming back every single time you're having Sean Morrison throw-ins every single time you, you, you your offensive players have got to hold the ball up and if they're not holding the ball up and if not they're not creating moments creative innovative moments then the ball's just going to keep coming back and that's what kept happening the ball kept coming back and I'm not saying Rotherham were dominant in the game whatsoever, but we were playing to their game. They were able to play that hoof ball. They were able to play that long ball from the throw-in. And Leeds didn't deserve anything else, in my opinion, out of that game. We really didn't. I thought we were really poor on the night. There was a couple of moments where you look at Kamara. I thought that had to go in. He had to test the keeper, at least. Dan James, when he was through in that first half, had to test the keeper. He was pushed a little bit far out, far wide. Perot in the first minute, ball comes in. Header has to do better. We saw the exact same thing with Perot against Leicester. First couple of minutes, I don't know if he's just getting into the game. Good chance, missed. And once again, I didn't think he was in the game. Perot is a very in and out and, and moments player. You know, We know that he's not going to be in the game uh, consistently throughout that 90 minutes and affect the game consistently. He's a very inconsistent player when it comes to form over a period of games and 90 minutes where he's very in and out. I thought that the changes for, from a Daniel Farker perspective were poor. I didn't think he was proactive enough. I think you saw the game state up until the 45 minutes. It was one of those games which was static. There wasn't a lot of movement um, beyond that midfield for me. I thought the midfield impact lessened throughout the game as well, but there wasn't that much offensive movement. There wasn't that many patterns going on. I thought it was Somerville or Bust. We didn't have another game plan. So it was, I'm a little bit like that. Daniel, what's the, what are we doing here? Is this just players off colour or was this the plan from the start? And I think when the game's like that on 45 and you're not seeing any change whatsoever, they get a goal. You've got you've to, if you're not changing it at 45, at least change it at 50 when you're not seeing any change whatsoever. At least change it at 50. And it's, you know, it's... It's it's not a good result for Leeds. You know, you're going into this weekend and, and we're looking at West Brom now because Leeds have to be nigh on perfect. And I've said multiple times in multiple videos that the season's not going to be won and lost right now. We know that, you know. But you don't want Ipswich after all this, after all what we've done, and Leicester, of course, all what we've done to claw it down, Leicester losing two games. You know, Ipswich going through that faulty period where obviously they had the cup loss and then they drew two games. And, you know, it's inconvincing wins every, every week for Ipswich. Unconvincing, I should say. But for Leeds to claw all that back and then for a really lacklustre performance. Now, you look at some of the poor teams. 
that we've performed against, you know, Birmingham, Sheffield Wednesday, QPR, we got the win, but, but you know, that was dismal as well. You know, Cardiff, I know Cardiff have come into it a little bit this season, but not a great team. And tonight, you know, Stoke, another one. Leeds have to be near perfect this season to catch these two. We know that. And tonight, we were not perfect. We were nothing short of, of, of average Really, really average tonight. And I actually thought Rotherham got it spot on. We're playing into their game. You've got, you know, the back line of Rotherham. I'll take you through it. Lee Peltier, ex Leeds United 2014, Neil Warnock and the likes. Sean Morrison. Sean Morrison has been a veteran in the Championship for about 40 years. And Daniel Ayala. I thought Daniel Ayala had hung his boots up about five to 10 years ago. I don't even know how old he is. And we barely tested them. We rarely tested them in that second half. That is not good enough for the potency that we have up front. It's simply not good enough. And as I say, I don't think Leeds were out of first gear today. And going into a game where you can dictate the feeling of this weekend, it's exceptionally poor. And Daniel Farker, I don't think that was good enough from him. I think leaving it till the 70th minute to then make changes. You know, when you've seen for what, 20, 25 odd minutes in that second half, nothing's changed. It's the exact same. We're passing the ball throughout the back. There's no proactiveness. There's no players stepping forward. I didn't think Joe Rodon did that enough either. Players stepping forward into that midfield to curate a little bit of space, a little bit of ingenuity. You know, we didn't see a lot of it. We didn't see a lot of players stepping up to the mark tonight. And and as I say, when you're moving the ball that slowly, that lethargically, what, what more do you expect? You know, Rotherham were able to get the shape back every single time. It's basic. You know, you'd see it Saturday, Sunday league. Let them have the ball, lads. They can pass it around the back. We'll just keep our shape and it'll be fine. We'll gobble it up. And that first half, we had moments, but that's why we always talk about it on the channel. Leeds are very, very good going forward, but we're not ruthless. We're not clinical whatsoever. We're not. Harsh, harsh truth, we're not. We've spoken about it on this channel so many times. We are not a clinical team. We waste mass amounts of chances. And we did it with the Bielsa season. You know, Bielsa season, when we went up, we still missed massive chances. Bamford, the top scorer that season was Bamford with 16. 16 goals and that was it. Think about the amount of chances we created that season for our top goal scorer to be on 16 goals. And listen, if Rutter's not on it, I think that's what concerned me tonight. If Rutter's not on it, Leeds didn't look on it whatsoever. That player, you know, wanting the ball consistently in that middle pocket, there wasn't anybody showing for it in that middle pocket, even when Rutter was on the pitch. You know, I think a lot of the time he clearly looked unfit, he clearly looked a little bit tired, but there's got to be something. There's got to be someone who takes the mantle. Who was leading tonight? You know, who wanted the ball? Who was taking the ball by the horns? It didn't look like that tonight. It looked like Leeds went into it. And a lot of people will say lethargic, la, 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 la. I think a lot of it was maybe a little bit of complacency. We're going to roll up tonight with Leeds United and we're going to stuff this lot. It's going to be easy. And I think they got tonight what the championship is all about for a lot of players maybe who haven't been there. The championship is all about rolling your sleeves up, having a game plan, sticking to that game plan and and, and, and toughing it out. And Rotherham exactly, they, they deserved a point tonight. Don't get me wrong, it, the, there was the, you know, the offside goal where Bamford was stood in an offside position. I'm, I'm not going to massively blame Bamford for that because if he hadn't had that little flick in that position, Anthony wouldn't have got the ball. But, you know, he stood in an offside position. The bit at the end where Somerville has a strike on goal, Nonto's through, play the ball through. The bit at the end where Somerville has a free kick, blazes it over the bar. These are moments where Leeds have got to be more com more composed, more assassin-like, more calculated and cool. Really, we have because, you know, listen, we've been nigh on perfect this season, but performances like tonight against a very, very, very poor team without their best two players in Sam Klukas and Cathu, without their best two players. You know, I know we had players missing of, uh, as well, but this Leeds team had more than enough to cope with what Rotherham had tonight. More than enough. We started playing into their game very, very early on and we didn't recover. We didn't recover. The goal that we conceded was nothing short of a shambles. The goal we scored was a very, very, very nice goal. Um, and then we didn't get into our rhythm. We didn't get into our rhythm until, what, the last five minutes and that isn't good enough for a team chasing the top two. We're looking at Ipswich, we're looking at Leicester now this weekend, and we're hoping that they don't take that 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 mantle and run with it now, you know? Really, really disappointed tonight, guys. I'm not going to hide it, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I've been extremely positive on the channel, but unfortunately, tonight simply wasn't good enough. I'm fascinated to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comment section below. Rotherham won, Leeds United won.